Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel! Well guys, today it's finally, finally time to make a doll for the second winner of my contest slash collab that I have announced already probably, I don't know, more than six months ago. If you are new here, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I will quickly, shortly explain you the situation. About yeah, six months ago, I've reached 500,000 followers and I've asked you, my followers, my audience, my favorite people here on YouTube, I asked you to draw all kinds of doll designs and I've asked you to send them to me. I've received over 800 artworks and I've selected two winners. And then the main prize was actually a doll made by me, completely following the original sketch, the original design of the winner. So a couple of months ago, when it was probably in the end of August, or no, probably it was in September, I've made the doll for the first winner of this collab contest. It was Lady Wellflower. I've made this beautiful koi fish mermaid for her. And today it's finally time for the second winner, for Andrea Maxwell and for her beautiful glow-in-the-dark jellyfish. You can see the sketch right now on the screen. It's not really a sketch, it's a beautiful artwork. And today we're going to make yeah, something close to what you can see on this drawing out of a Monster High doll. My mom is helping me today with this doll's outfit and this is actually the main reason why it took me so long to start working on this doll. Well, not my mom, but the post. Because it took them longer than five weeks to deliver the outfit from Belarus from my mom to Belgium to me. But anyway, finally, two days ago, I've got the dress. I was really, really extremely nervous. This is the second time in my career things like this happen. Also, the outfit of Arya Stark was on the way for a very long time. And now also Jellyfish was traveling somewhere, <laughs> who knows where. But yeah, now everything is okay, I've got the outfit and I can finally start working on this doll. And this is actually quite a complicated project. Maybe it doesn't look like this immediately on the picture, but there are a lot of details that I really have to find a solution for. I need to really think how to make them, what is the best way to make them. So I'm going to start working immediately. I had to wait already for a long time <laughs> to start working on this project. Please don't forget to send a lot of love to Andrea for this beautiful artwork, for being my inspiration today. I will leave all her contacts, all her social media in the description box under this video. Yeah, and I will start working and meanwhile, guys, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel because, uh, yeah, when we reach 600,000 followers, I think we're going to make something like this again, some sort of a contest collab with you or something like this. So, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell button to get notified about my new doll repaint videos and of course please don't forget to like my videos because it really helps to promote my art here on YouTube. So guys, and now we can start working. For this project I'm gonna take this Frankie doll, I don't know, she's kinda cute and kinda looks in some way like the girl on the drawing. So I think it's quite a good choice of a doll for this makeover. So now we're going to undress her, we will cut her hair very short and then I will warm her head up with a hair dryer to make the rubber soft to be able to disconnect the head from the body and also to melt the glue that is still sitting inside of the head.
I removed the rest of the short hair together with the glue from the inside of her head using my tweezers like always. And then I remove her makeup with pure acetone. Okay guys, then actually the glow in the dark part of the makeover starts because we are going to give her beautiful glow in the dark hair. You can see on the drawing that she has white hair with pink ends. I cannot really dye doll hair like this and keep it glow in the dark at the same time. That's why I will try to make this effect in a little bit different way. I'm going to place pink hair to the back of the head and to the top I will place white hair and the white hair I'm going to make a little bit shorter than the pink hair and then when we curl it all together it will look like she has white hair with pink ends and this old hair is going to glow in the dark I hope because I'm going to use this glow in the dark nylon hair in two different colors or maybe even in three different colors Check them out by the way, this is extremely cool, I really love glow-in-the-dark things. So now let's first cover her head with glow-in-the-dark acrylics that I've bought especially for this project. And then I will take my rerouting tool and we will give her new glow-in-the-dark hair. So for the pink part I'm gonna use two different shades of pink. I think it will look more interesting if we blend the pale pink with another more this bubblegum color pink. So and this is how her hair looks a couple of hours later, now I still want to check how it all glows in the dark, if it still glows in the dark, and this is very interesting by the way, because white hair glows really intensely. The light pink glows a little bit, it's quite visible but not that bright, and the dark pink hair almost doesn't glow at all. So, okay, it's good to know. So now let's add tacky glue inside of the head, then we will let it dry, and then we'll start drawing the face. You can see I've protected her hair with tape and kitchen plastic. Now we can seal it with three layers of Mr. Super Clear sealant. And then I will apply a layer of white pastels to her face to cover up the greenish skin tone a little bit. Then I sketch her eyes, eyebrows, lips and the girl on the drawing she has pink eyebrows, pink eyes and pink lips. So I will use immediately pink pencil to draw them, to sketch them immediately in pink. And 
And then I take this light peach and light pink color pastels and I continue working on her skin tone, meanwhile applying shadows to her face as well. She has very soft natural makeup with a lot of pink on it, on the original drawing. So this is what I'm trying to recreate on this doll. You know, there will be no colorful smoky eyes today. It will be very soft, sweet and gentle makeup. Very natural with lots of pink. And another extra special detail of this girl is the white eyelashes. I've made a doll with white lashes probably just once on my channel. So I'm really happy to try it again today. So now I think I can add highlights to her eyes using white acrylics, because right now her face is mainly finished. Okay, now I will let her face for a while and I will blush her body to make it the same color as her face. And I will start with cutting off the pin on her neck, then I will sand her body with nail buffers to remove the gloss from the surface of the plastic, and then I will spray it with a couple of layers of Mr. Super Clear. Yeah, and after this we can cover it with the same white, peach and pink soft pastels. So now the head and the body look pretty much the same and it means it's time to apply some freckles because you can see that the girl on the original drawing she has glow-in-the-dark freckles all over her face and body. You know the pink glow-in-the-dark paint that I have it doesn't glow that much in the dark and when I would apply it in tiny dots like freckles dots there will be nothing left from the special effect. I've tried it here on paper already and it doesn't look that pretty and glowy at all. That's why now I will make freckles using my regular technique with regular acrylics and then we will apply some extra dots using a regular glow-in-the-dark paint, just with a brush to make these dots a little bit bigger. And it says, by the way, even on the packaging of the real glow-in-the-dark paint, that mixing it with other colors will greatly reduce glow-in-the-dark effect. That's why the pink paint glows less than the white one, and dark pink hair give almost no glowing as well. It always works best on the white basis. 
And this is how it looks when the acrylics get dry. You can see that the glow and the dark dots are almost invisible in a daylight. And this is how they look when I turn the lights off. So, now I think we can move on to the outfit, shoes and to the accessories. And I think I want to make the umbrella first, because this is the most challenging piece we will create today. And you know, I kind of feel motivated today, I feel like I'm ready for the challenge, so let's do it quickly before I lost <laughs> this courage. And we're going to start with cutting six of these petals out of clear warbler thermoplastic. Then I take a soldering tool and I start connecting the sides of the petals together. And this is actually a special tool for attaching rhinestones. It gets very hot and it melts the thermoplastic and it really like melts two pieces of them together, glues them together. The umbrella on Andrea's drawing has a very interesting shape, guys. It doesn't have a regular round umbrella dome or how to call this thing, but it has more a jellyfish shape, more pointy on the top. So I hope I've chosen the right shape of the petals to recreate this shape of the umbrella. So guys, here is the finished thing. It looks very cool, I think. I don't know, I feel very satisfied. So now let's take a barbecue stick, a piece of warbler thermoplastic, and let's make that crook handle of the umbrella. And then we can attach it to the umbrella, to the top of it. And after this, I'm going to paint all the parts of the umbrella with acrylics. So guys, check it out, this is how it looks now, already super cute, I'm very excited about it. But now we still need to make these long things hanging from the umbrella. Check it out, I've bought here these glow-in-the-dark strings, I don't know how to call them, they're like very thin and tiny plastic tubes. And they're glow-in-the-dark, at least supposed to be glow-in-the-dark, so it's ideal for us. And now I'm going to glue them to the umbrella.
I've let the glue dry and now guys we can finally see our finished umbrella. I don't know, I think it looks absolutely fantastic. I was so worried about making it. And right now I'm absolutely proud about the end result. I don't know, I feel like a happy person right now. So, and now when it all turned out really good, we can finally move on to the outfit. And you can see now my mom making a weightless jellyfish dress out of real silk. And my mom asked me, by the way, to thank you guys for all your positive comments under our videos. You always write so many good words to my mom about her outfits, about her creations. So my mom really asked me to thank you guys personally from her for all your support. So this dress will exist out of multiple layers and the main job here is to frill the layers and to attach them to the dress. So, and here is the finished dress. It looks so gentle. It's absolutely, I don't know, weightless and fragile. This is one of the most delicate outfits on my channel, I think. Really, it's an unbelievably light and gentle and delicate piece of clothing here. And now I will take our pink glow in the dark paint and I will make this pink gradient that you can see on the Andrea's drawing. I will have to do it really layer per layer, protecting the rest of the dress with kitchen plastic because it would be very interesting to smear this paint all over and just waste the dress. So I have to be very, very careful here. Really, paint one layer, let it dry, protect the rest, move on to the next layer. This is how I'm gonna work today. And this is where I've ended up with the dress. I think it looks even more delicate now because now this fabric looks like, I don't know, like some rose petals or something like this. Very pretty, very gentle. And if I put the lights out, it starts looking like a real jellyfish moving and glowing deep underwater. I don't know, it's so magical, amazing. So, now we still need to make a pair of shoes and you can see that on the drawing they look like, I don't know, like something transparent, glow-in-the-dark and jelly-looking. It was another challenging decision in today's project, how to make something like this, jelly-looking, transparent and glow-in-the-dark. And I think I will try to make the shoes using glow-in-the-dark glue sticks for my glue gun. I've never tried it before, but I don't know, potentially it looks like a good solution. So wish me luck, guys, I've never done it before.
Well, it looks quite promising, but it's still very bumpy. So I will smooth out the surface with the side of this hot top of the glue gun. I will not add more glue, just smoothen it out. Then I trim the sides of the shoes a little bit to make it more perfect. And you know what? I think these shoes, they look even better than I expected them to be. Now you can see on the drawing that there are some sparkles on the shoes. So I think I will cover them with silver glitter. It will make them look kind of more finished in some way. So guys, and here are the finished shoes. They look absolutely fantastic. I'm proud of them, really. I've never made these kind of shoes out of glue, using glue gun. So now let's still check how they look in the dark, if they glow. And yes, guys, yes, they glow like pure magic. Really super amazing. I'm so happy about the shoes, not normal. Now let's still quickly paint a bracelet. The girl on the drawing wears a glow-in-the-dark bracelet. So this is what we will make as well, and then we'll style her hair. And here, guys, we'll have to make some changes because the girl on the original drawing, she has quite short hair. But I will have to make it a little bit longer in real life because making this short hairstyle on rerouted hair is nearly impossible to say honestly. This kind of a hairstyle, like on the drawing, I could make out of yarn hair glued to the doll's head. But then it would not be glow in the dark. There is no way to make yarn hair glow in the dark. And if you want it to be glow in the dark, we will have to keep her hair longer. So guys, I hope nobody is upset about it. But I will try to style her hair very close to the original drawing, just to make it longer.
So guys, this is where I've ended up with her hairstyle. She looks super cute now, I think. So the next step in our transformation is attaching false lashes. And as I've mentioned it already before, the girl has white lashes, but they're not just white, but they're white and glow in the dark. That's why first I will glue the white eyelashes to her eyelids and then I will cover it with glow-in-the-dark paint. So now let's still add glossy varnish to her eyes and lips. Then I will bring everything together and then we'll finally take a look at the end result pictures. So here is my super cute and gentle jellyfish girl. It was quite a long way to go today, but now it's finally time to feel satisfied and happy about the end result. You know, I was doubting so much about the best way to make the umbrella, to make the shoes, also her hairstyle, it gave me quite a lot of doubt as well. But now when I see the end result, I feel like it was a very exciting journey that helped me even to learn a couple of new craft methods. So I'm really a very happy artist right now. And I really hope that I'm not the only satisfied artist here today. I really hope that Andrea also likes the way her drawing turned out in real life. And I'm really looking forward to hearing how Andrea will find it. This would be, by the way, a perfect Halloween project. This is how I've planned it initially, but the international delivery services have changed my plans a little bit, so we have some kind of an extended Halloween today, the fourth Halloween special. Now, the next week I'm going to skip a video because I really need to take a short break after finishing my Halloween specials. I also really have to clean my working space here a little bit, after making these four dolls and then I will slowly transit into winter and holidays dolls I've got already the first winter special outfit from my mom this time it didn't take a century to arrive here to Belgium, thank God so stay tuned for our first winter special in two weeks so, and this doll I'm going to send to Andrea now I hope it will travel more or less fast because we are in a lockdown here again and it looks like it's gonna last, I don't know, till the end of winter for sure, till some March, April or even longer. So let's hope it will not affect the post too much. Well, and now guys, I want to hear your thoughts, of course, about this project. Let's discuss it in the comments. And also, please don't forget to send Andrea some love. I will link her Instagram in the description under this video. So guys, and that was my project of the week. I really hope you enjoyed it today. And if so, please don't forget to support my art here on YouTube with your likes. Of course, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell button, and I will see you already very soon in my new dolly paint video. Love you guys. Bye.